So I woke up this morning and I was in uh, a little bit of a rough mood, rough around the edges this morning. And, you know, I needed a gift. I needed a gift from the heavens that just brightened my day right from the start. And I received that gift when I logged into Twitter and I saw that hashtag cat pervert was trending. Cat pervert. So... We're going to talk a little bit about this and do it through the lens of an author that loves absurdity and humor, because let me tell you, uh, real life is often far funnier than anything that we can come up with in our own imagination. So uh, we're going to get into this in just a second. Here comes people. Cat pervert. Oh, this is going to be the gift that keeps on giving, I'm telling you. So, uh, a couple things before I get into the whole cat pervert thing. You're probably like, what the hell is going on? I'm just like, everything's going to be explained in just a few minutes, right? Uh, first, I just wanted to alert you that uh, I lost my email list. I had a little, of a little bit of a scuffle with my email list company. So, if you were on my list, you are no longer on the list. There's a couple things to update you on real quick. First of all is I've been working really hard on no, space pew pew, right? And I'm sorry, everything's reversed. It's what happens. So this is a satirical science fiction novel. I grew up watching movies like Ice Pirates and Spaceballs and some Red Dwarf and things like that. And uh, my, my influences definitely shine through here. I wanted to write something humorous and lighthearted, and I've been having a blast getting this story out. Now, if you hop over to my site, right, I'm going to show you right here what it looks like <clears throat> when you get on there. Um, if you hop over to my site, you're going to see my mug on the opening page. There's also a little subscribe right here. If you go ahead and click on that, you can go ahead and sign up for the email list. Uh, and get updated on everything that I have going on. I'll send out some fun stuff from time to time. My objective is not to spam you with anything, but to just stay in touch with you because YouTube is what it is. Sometimes it's like, sure, we'll show people your video. Sometimes it's like, nah, piss off. So this helps me to be able to actually stay in touch with you and give you updates on the projects I have, including Caretaker Part 2, which is the steward, and including Space Pew Pew. Also, right on the menu space pew pew you can go there and uh and check it out meet the crew i've got a fantastic cast of characters this is a real funny story that i have going uh like i said it's an absolute joy getting into it so i hope you'll explore it a little bit and uh and let me know how you dig it and here's the other thing if you do go ahead and subscribe you can do it on my socials page right here as soon as you do that and you subscribe and confirm your subscription you are going to get uh, access to the first chapter of Space Pew Pew for free on my site. So if you just subscribe, it, the confirmation page will have a link on there. You can read the first chapter, dive in, and enjoy. I hope you absolutely love it because I am having the time of my life writing this story, and, uh, and I think that shines through. So uh, please consider doing that. And also, if you don't mind... Uh, I have right up here, zoop, right on my head, this uh, little rumble thing, at David Batterino on Rumble. I only have like one subscriber on there. You need five to live stream. I would love to start doing some live stream stuff. So please, pretty please, if you can, hop over to Rumble and give me a sub. And then I can start doing these things live and we can chat while we're going around and, and doing all this stuff. So some changes happening and all this kind of stuff, but it's all good and all good things going on. So that being said, let's talk about cat pervert so i'm gonna play this video for you and uh we're just gonna we're just gonna watch this together i'm not gonna interrupt like i'm not gonna pause it or anything like that it's a little over a minute and a half long and uh this kind of gives you context for the whole cat pervert thing it is because of this video and an argument over the free will of a fantastic feline named mercury so uh let's go ahead and watch this and then i want to just kind of break down some of the humor in this thing so here we go uh boom and boom 
No, yard I'm not. And it's I'm our cat. You understand? Our cat. I'm not oh, even in see. my yard right now. How? What am I doing? The, 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 the gate's open. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hard. You're unreasonable people. You're holding our cat. How? I'm not even in there. I want you to explain how. If you would go in your yard and say, Mercury, go home. Don't come in our yard anymore. <laughs> yeah, she they will want not. Listen. To... She's a cat. She doesn't speak English. Oh, dead. really? You. This this doesn't mean go home. <laughs> no, huh? hand huh? signals don't mean anything. It's a cat, dude. Really? Okay. All right. Well, we'll have the police department uh, figure it out. Absolutely. Okay? Great idea. Right. Oh, no. Boy. So the cat doesn't eat and drink anything over there, yep. right? No. Oh no, never. Right? No, never. No. No, never. Never. Yeah, yeah. never. Yeah, you cat pervert. Oh my God, you got. <laughs> I cat have done. Pervert. I've done nothing cat to bring pervert. the cat. Literally, I've done nothing to bring. Here it comes. This dude's cat lost. Pervert. This dude, he's, he's lost it. He's lost it. Cat pervert. It. <laughs> he's lost it. He's lost it. He's lost it. Yeah, yeah there it is. Oh no. On my property. Okay, that's why you're harboring our cat. Harboring a cat. Is that a crime? What? It was something else. I'm a cat pervert. What crime is that? What crime is that? You know what? There's a crime about you harboring my cat. What crime is that? Against the law. What crime is that? It's called harboring an animal. I can understand being angry if my cat was in your yard. You're angry because your cat is in my yard. You're making things a lot worse. Yeah. No, I can't. It's called harboring a cat. Harboring an animal, people. All right, so look. I don't even know, like, where to start with this thing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I try not to be judgmental over people that are in distress, but, like, that guy, that guy's got some things he's got to work out for sure. Um, okay, there's a lot of humor to unpack in this. And, and like I said, I kind of approach this as an author, especially right now that I'm doing the whole space pew pew thing and I'm writing comedy scenes in there. And I'm like, how do you make those sound natural and normal? And then here it is a gift in real life, in real time as to how to make humor sound normal in dialogue and everything else. Now, look, I don't want to be the guy that explains the joke because that's just not funny, but I do want to kind of go over a couple things with this. And so I took the, uh, the Liberty, honestly, it was my honor to transcribe this into text. Uh, now mud stands for, uh, Mercury's unhinged daddy and, uh, NBR for neighbor, right? So I just wanted to point out a couple things because I think there's some important stuff in here. Uh, authors often have a hard time with writing dialogue and writing humor in dialogue and making it sound natural. And so what better way than to take a humorous video and just highlight a couple things that make it funny and that you can apply then to your own work. And certainly that I apply in my own. I do a lot of this stuff already because I feel like I have a, a knack for humor and dialogue and everything else, but it's, it's fascinating to see it played out in real time and transcribed. So the first one, it's our cat. You understand I'm not even, it's our, our cat, right? That right there, interruptions are funny and interruptions during situations really, they, they, they pinpoint where the humor is, right? It's highlighting the our cat when he's getting interrupted like that. First of all, even before that, this entire situation is absurd, right? The fact that a cat has free will to go where it wants. And like, I'm going to step through and just explain like how the absurdity just piles on over and over again here. Um, but the situation of it itself is just like this ridiculous argument and it's, it's absurd. And that's what makes it so fantastic. This is the best thing to have an argument over the free will of a cat. Cats don't care about humans. Like this is great. Um, Okay, and then we have the highlight, right? I'm not even in my yard. What am I doing? The gate's open. The gate is open, and the cat wanders in here, and, and Mr. Mud is really mad at it. You're unreasonable people. You're holding our cat as if, though, they're just there, like, clutching onto the feline, which I'm sure is probably not happening. How? I'm not even in there. I want you to explain how. 
And then th- my favorite part, if you would go in your yard and say, Mercury, go home, don't come in our yard anymore. <laughs> She's a cat. She doesn't speak English. Boom. That line, right? That line in here, if you're writing something that's humorous, that that obvious and plain pointing out the absurdity in the middle of the absurdity makes it so much more fun, right? She doesn't, cats don't speak English. Like, who needs to say that? That's what makes it great. Um, and then, oh, really? Like, like your dad, like, yeah, she doesn't <laughs> really makes the shoeing motion, right? Doesn't this mean, this doesn't mean go home? Uh, no, yes, yes. In fact, if cats don't speak English, the chances of them understanding sign language are fairly low. I'm just saying. Um, no, hand signals don't mean anything. It's a cat, dude. Now, granted, if I was if I was Mercury's unhinged daddy, I would just like you know shake the food bowl, and then here comes Mercury, or open a can, and like here comes the cat. You know, things that we know work. Um, so really, okay, all right. Well, we'll have the police department figure it out. Like involving the authorities. Because the cat is choosing, and look, I can't speak for Mercury, but if I was that cat, I'd want to hang out with the chill dude next door, <laughs> and probably not the people that adopted me, I'm just saying. Uh, oh, so the cat doesn't even drink anything over there. So then then we have the sarcastic back and forth, him and the sarcastic accusatory, oh, the cat doesn't eat or drink anything, and the sarcastic no, never, that comes back at him, which just <laughs> ends up ramping it up to cat pervert. What a great slur cat pervert is like what cat pervert, cat pervert. What even, what even is that? What, like what you can think of so many better things, but like maybe you can't, maybe that is the perfect insult for somebody who owns property next to you that your cat prefers. Uh, I've done nothing to bring the cat over. This dude has lost it. That's why we're calling the police, the police and you're harboring our cat. Now this part, When I, I didn't really notice it when I was listening, but I notice it when I'm reading it. This sounds like something straight out of Seinfeld. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I can just picture Kramer, like they're accusing me of harboring a cat and like harboring a cat, you know, like Jerry, like doing that. Like he, he, that's what he does. He replies to it and accentuates it and then harboring the cat. Like, you know, it's some kind of a thing like George could be doing it. And then the whole thing about being a cat pervert, like I'm a cat pervert. He's the cat pervert. Like you're a cat pervert. You know, I just, I hear Jerry and George and everybody going back and forth on this insane thing. It sounds like they just in the script room for Seinfeld, they wrote this, like it's, it's the cat pervert episode. Um, and that's what makes it so beautiful back and forth and, and so great just from a comedy standpoint. Um, and saying that it's a crime, harboring an animal is a crime. Like that's one of those ridiculous, like, like, obviously it's not, you know, but like you're just made up, you know, you're harboring an animal. It's like the Festivus pole. It's like something just so ridiculous that, that you say in a serious manner, um, And so, and then it's the best part, right? Just the very end. That line is wonderful. Uh, Dude, you're making things a lot worse. You could just send my cat home. Like we've already, we've already been over sending Mercury home and it doesn't, it doesn't work. No, I can't. Uh, This, this tug of war over a cat's free will. uh, Everything about this was just like the best comedy to start the day. And I think looking at it as, as an author, for me, they're not using each other's first names, which is something that a lot of authors will do. We inject first names. Now, uh, for one of my characters in Space Pew Pew, uh, Toshiro, the robot, like the alien, the android rather, uh, he uses Alex's first name frequently. And that is a choice that I'm making, uh, just in how he's addressing people. He's a bit more, um, well, a bit more Android-like, a bit more artificial intelligence, a bit more robotic. So he's, Alex, this, this, and this. Alex, what are you doing with this? Like, those kinds of things. It's his way of of addressing him. But in normal speech, we don't do that. If anything, like, you know, if 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 Jacqueline and I are talking to us in here, we'll, we'll use sweetheart, or we'll use babe, or something like that. But, like, if she's like, David, come to the bathroom, like, I'm like, oh, no. Like, did I, did I forget to flush? Like, did something happen? 
Uh, so usually like our first names don't really come into play in that normal conversation. And so that's something else to highlight the absurdity of the situation. First of all, it has to be ridiculous. The, the constant upping of it, like the, it's just climb. It's like climbing rungs on a ladder, right? I'm not even in the yard. Like that makes it more ridiculous. Um, explain how, oh, well, if you just tell her, well, that makes it even more ridiculous. Use the sign language. That makes it even more ridiculous. And then we've got cat pervert, cat pervert that like, that makes it just even more ridiculous. Each one of these is, is basically just intensifying the already absurd situation in the best way possible. And then the whole Seinfeld section about harboring a cat being illegal uh, and so the police need to get involved and then just bringing it right back home. You could just send my cat home, but you choose not to, you know, because Mercury would obviously listen. Oh, man, I hope Mercury is OK. I I would be hanging out with the neighbor if I was that cat. Uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight this something a little bit fun for today and uh, and see what you think about it. Have you seen this at all? When I got up this morning, it was at somewhere, you know, like around 100,000 views. Right now, it's standing at 23 million views. So talk about a viral video. You know, that is exactly uh, what has happened to uh, to Mercury in this whole situation. That's going to be a famous cat. And so uh, so there you have it, folks. Uh, just a, a little bit of a an author's eye view of humor and how that plays out in dialogue and how hopefully we can use it in our own to just uh, make our scenes funnier and funnier. Once again, if you please subscribe and hit the bell and all that kind of stuff, that's always great. And pretty please sign up on the site for um, the email list. I would greatly appreciate it. You get the first chapter of Space Pew Pew uh, as soon as you sign up so you can read that and enjoy. And we can just kind of keep in touch uh, through all these things and stay updated on my projects, my projects, and I can stay updated with you. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it, and hopefully we'll see you on Rumble as well. Looking forward to that. It's a great system, high-definition videos, everything uploads super fast. It is just, like, sleek and wonderful on there, and uh, really looking forward to doing some live streams with you soon as well. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I will catch you again very soon.